Okay, is that up there? Okay. Okay, thank you for that. Sorry about the delay. Um, I think uh, I first, this isn't my main area of research. It's something that I've been working on on the side that has increasingly taken up more and more of my time. Um, initially, I, I came to Wing Chai. I think this was just after my postdoc uh, when I found myself uh, having completed a postdoc and having no employment and being really sort of out there, sort of adrift kind of thing. And um, I found quite a great deal of consolation in the, 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 the poems of Nguyen Chai. And it was only after, I think, some time that I kind of discovered why it was that it was so appealing to me. Um, let me just read a poem to start with to give a sense of uh, why this may have, uh, this author may have appealed to me. So he, this poem, uh, titled in English, uh, In Your Still Hut, Burn Incense, Read Five Books. In your still hut, burn incense, read five books. You'll cleanse the hallowed tower, you'll purge the soul. There's poetry at home. Why fear hard times? The world shuns literature. You'll win no fame. Your head was your head has worn the rat worn to rags, the two fu cap. Your hand yet picks Tao Chin's chrysanthemums. What have you got to while, to while the hours away? A batch or two of verse, a pot of wine. So, I mean, I, I think every scholar in this room has perhaps found a, a moment in their life when they've worn the, the black tofu cap uh, to shreds. Um, so that was kind of the, the existential or humanistic content of engaging with Nguyen Chai. Uh, but then also there's a political aspect and a geopolitics aspect as, as well that I'd like to uh, talk about. Um, see, that the, the, the title is quite provocative, Vietnamese custodianship of the Confucian tradition. Uh, but let me play that out a little bit. Uh, this is Lake Con Son where he spent a lot of time as, as a child and later, after doing the heroic things that I'll talk about, uh, found himself back here writing the poem that I just read to you. So this is in northern Vietnam, quite uh, red, red, uh, in the Red River Delta, quite, quite close to China, actually. Um, so drink, when you drink the water, remember the source. So just keep that there as kind of um, yeah, something to think about. So in terms of the practical uh, aspects of my project, there are these uh, conceptual uh, problems that I, I want to address. First is contesting the, ca uh, the category of Middle Kingdom by highlighting alternative rival Confucian-based uh, geopolitical lexicon. Um, so in the Vietnamese tradition, China or the Middle Kingdom is often referred to as uh, uh, the northern lands. Uh, uh, also contest the, the, the politically laden uh, link between the notion of uh, heavenly mandate and middle kingdom, uh, uh, which can also be contested from within the, the Confucian tradition itself, provide a non-Chinese centric and de-centered multipolar view of the development of Confucian civilization, um, and find a narrative uh, that is both receptive to actual historical complexities and that is not governed by a contemporary nationalistic or political interests of any single nation. So it's a non-nationalistic project, which links, I think, with the idea of Confucianism and harmony um, of this conference. Uh, and this may be useful in articulating a normative policy position for the uh, and, a, and a, a more appropriate discursive posture. Um, it sees Confucianism in a Vietnamese context as propagated often through through non-Confucian traditions, such as Buddhism, particularly. Um, and there's been interesting work done on the way popular Buddhist tracts um, uh, have uh, uh, propagated the, uh, uh, Confucian concepts. Uh, Liam Kelly's the, the person working on that. Um, distinguish, uh, distinguish between overt, neo-Confucian administrative formalism, particularly of the later 
uh, uh, Nguyen dynasty, and a more uh, subtle, esoteric, longer tradition of Confucianism in a Vietnamese tradition. So there's two things. When you speak about Confucianism in a Vietnamese tradition, there are at least two things we're talking about. One, the Neo-Confucian Neo high administrative culture, um, and uh, uh, another is more uh, of a more um, a, a, a less overt, a, a less tangible uh, cultural tradition. That's much longer. Um, okay, so conceptual framework. I think this is an interesting point that Liam Kelly, probably the, the most interesting uh, intellectual historian of Vietnam at the moment, he makes this point that Confucianism is an invented signifier that bears the problematic relationship to the thing it signifies. Um, uh, the problematic character of this relation, the relationship stems from the fact that although Confucianism emerged in China, there's no term in Chinese for which Confucianism uh, is a translation. Instead, this term is uh, par partially of Western manufacturing mold and it tends to essentialize rather than uh, uh, disparate the set of practices and beliefs. Nonetheless, scholars agree that this dis disparate uh, set of practices and beliefs that Confucianism problematically signifies did exist in the past and to some extent still exists today. The difficulty lies with finding a vocabulary to describe it and identify it. Okay. So what's in a name? Uh, so the problem of uh, uh, conceptualizing Confucianism is, is difficult. Even, even in, in relation to Vietnam, it's even more problematic because the use of the name Vietnam or Viet as, as, as a na national title were, 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 was highly contested in early Vietnamese history and was really um, of, often um, uh, not used, uh, as, as we'll see. So we don't even really know what Vietnam is, and never mind what Confucianism is, um, in a sense of trying to find stable analytic concepts. Uh, okay, um, and also the Vietnamese themselves dispute what Confucianism means. For Vietnamese, often Confucianism is often associated with sort of a misogynistic form, of highly formalized culture. It's not viewed. Um, uh, sort of in a, in a positive light as opposed to, say, uh, Buddhism. Uh, and a further problem that during this period of uh, Nguyen Chai, uh, the Ming invaders confiscated um, all the, the, the legal codes and literary works of the capital Hanoi, and supposedly, um, yeah, no one knows what happens to them. Uh, so in this very literate tradition, most of the literary sources were, 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 were lost during this period. So. Um, uh, trying to unpack what exactly were the law codes uh, in the various Vietnamese dynasties before this period is very, you know, well, it can't be done. Okay, uh, an another scholar raises this uh, interesting point. Uh, for Chinese subjects, China was of uh, the central country, Zhongguo, and, and, uh, and Dai Viet, uh, a land of uh, the Yi people located beyond the power of civilization. In stark contrast, contrast uh, for Vietnamese subjects, Dai Viet was the, the southern country, Nam Guo, uh, or Nam Quoc, uh, forming a binary, a binary with the northern country, China. Uh, and these terms are, uh, are highly sort of, uh, you know, contentious terms like Dai, that's empire, uh, implying that the ruler of Dai Viet um, uh, is able to communicate directly with heaven as the Chinese emperor was. Uh, so, so that, that term, um, uh, Chinese colonists didn't like, so that, that was forbidden, uh, it was forbidden to use that ter ter term in early Chinese, um, early Vietnamese history. Um, so even just the, 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 the um, how you label a country is, is highly uh, problematic. Okay, so I don't think, I think this just makes more of the, the same point, uh, the desire to, to, to de- uh, uh, that what happened in the Red River Delta was the emergence of an alternative, a, 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 another centre of Confucian-based culture, which these, which these sort of stabilised the, 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 the classical world, uh, classical worldview. So this, that's that problem. Uh, let's skip over that. Okay. Um, however, at the same time, there are points of conciliation between Vietnamese and Chinese history. Um, so Vietnamese shared a civilizational origins with the Chinese equally. 
uh, only junior only in size, not in seniority. Vietnam and, 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 and China, two parts of a greater civilization a whole, not reducible to either empire. Vietnam is only half of the binary to escape barbarian dynastic rule and, main, and maintain sort of continuity, at least until the French. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, they, they both claim origins with uh, uh, the, 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 the mythical personage of the divine farmer, Shen Nung, uh, the mystical common ancestor to both uh, Chinese and Vietnamese, according to the Dai Viet Su Ki, uh, Tuan Tu. Um, that's a, 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 the first Vietnamese kingdom, which is interesting, was, was called uh, Van Lang, uh, Van, uh, 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 the, uh, well, the Chinese term, uh, well, Sino-Vietnamese term referring to uh, culture or literature. So almost every Vietnamese man has Van as their middle name. Um, uh, so this emphasizing the efflorescent inheritance as the defining char characteristic of, of Vietnamese nationhood. Uh, so yeah, and, and traditionally the rulers of Vietnam attempted to maintain parity <laughs> with, with their larger brother China. Uh, traditionally, if, if if, if, if the ruler of China referred to themselves as, 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 as a Dai, as an emperor, the, the Vietnamese ruler would want to also refer to him, himself as, as a Dai, um, of, often uh, with, with consequences that didn't work out too well. Um, so let's get on to Nguyen Trai, uh, pen name Uk Trai, life and work. Well, basically, he was writing at the time in which the great uh, civilizations around Vietnam, Angkor and Pagan, were sort of uh, running out of steam and winding back. Uh, and Confucianism can be seen as a stronger organizational form that would enable uh, the, the, the expansion of the Vietnamese state southwards um, to what is now uh, down to Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, so as an organizational form, it was highly useful in, in, in establishing Vietnamese statehood. And perhaps without it, it is arguable whether um, there would be a, a state of Vietnam today. Okay, so oh. okay, uh, basically, Nguyen Chai uh, sought to remodel the, the nation's legal and instant, institutional structure away from Buddhist and even Hindu influences. So that one of the previous dynasties um, before the Ming invaded. Uh, was a dynasty that was heavily influenced by, by Buddhist tradition and even Hinduism was, was creeping in in certain ways. Um, uh, so he was part of a kind of a re or re or near, re near Confucianization um, that occurred around the same time, along with what's referred to as the three teachings. So uh, Buddhism, Confucianism, and, and, and Taoism, Amdong. Uh, it's important to note that even though China also has this interaction between these three traditions, Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism. In the Vietnamese context, it's, it's kind of, um, it's calibrated differently because Buddhism came to Vietnam centuries early and established itself as the, the institute, main institutional form a lot earlier. Um, so that's kind of a, 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 a crucial aspect that even though they both share these three teaching traditions, um, they don't share them in the same way equally. They share them with di the different emphasis and different kind of um, uh, dynamics going on in, in the interacting interplay between them. Okay, uh, so yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I can go through that. Uh, this is, this is a, oh, so the next slide, sorry. Uh, okay, so, so yeah, um, Confucianism in Vietnam, known as No Yao, literally referring to teaching of the scholars, stressed the moral development of the individual to become a Quan Du, uh, or uh, basically perfect man. So that's, that's all, that's all you'll know, know that, I need to expand on that. Um, uh, this is the Vietnam we're talking about at the, at the particular time. It was a state that ran, ran down these newly, the purple area at the bottom that's uh, newly colonized from the, um, from uh, Champa sort of Hindu uh, people. Uh, but basically, the area we're looking at, Nguyen Chai and, and uh, the, the future king he'll work for, came from the, the light pink area, um, and uh, the main centre of action was always main uh, uh, thrust of Vietnamese civilization was always up the top, the, up the top part. So really, we can see the whole bottom bottom part of modern day Vietnam isn't even on on the radar. It's not part of the story at the, at the moment. 
so it's, um, I think this is another interesting map because it shows that what we think of as China and Vietnam don't work historically as, as categories because uh, the Vietnamese were traditionally in modern China, uh, at least most of them were, and that's how they still see themselves. Um, uh, they often regard uh, uh, Chinese south of the Yangtze River to be, uh, in a sense, uh, Sinized Vietnamese. Um, so that's an interesting point. Um, and, and, and the people that remained sort of distinct in terms of having a distinct culture were only those in the Red River Delta who, who, who managed to somehow manage to, 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 to develop um, a slightly dis uh, distinguished culture. Um, so I think that map's important to kind of give a context, give a, give a context to, to, to break down so, so that we don't ap apply contemporary geography onto the past. Um, so, okay. So 1406, the, the Ming Dynasty uh, invades a newly established and unpopular Ho Dynasty, uh, 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 in, uh, in, in Ho Dynasty based in modern day Hanoi. Um, it's interesting to note also that the Ho Dynasty referred to themselves as Dai Ngu, uh, Ngu basically the, the Vietnamese version of Wei. So uh, this was a, a Chinese, Chinese origin family uh, based in Hanoi. Um, Calling, calling, uh, uh, calling their country basically the same name as as a, as, as a, a part of China. So I think that, so. The, this this period, I mean, distinguishing clearly between what is Chinese and what is Vietnamese is is, is just uh, well, it, it can't really be done to be honest. Um, uh, Ming invades to, to to put down the previous Trang Dynasty. Okay, um, what happens? Uh, so let's skip over this. Um, okay, so during the Nguyen Chai, um, basically, uh, he didn't support the Ho Dynasty. He found that another don, a, another contender, someone from another important family, uh, as another southern sort of southern uh, family, um, and and supported them in in, um, in in pushing back the the, the Ming, um, uh, and that. Uh, uh, and, and the, the, um, the family he supported went on to create their own dynasty. Um, uh, but it wasn't an easy, easy route. I mean, he, he, his father was arrested, taken up to China for around two million other people. Local culture often uh, destroyed as kind of almost a kind of a, a, a cultural genocide to a certain extent. Um, and then, okay, let's just, I'll just skip down here. So we can see here kind of, uh, what, what happened in terms of um, the Chinese forces invading, or Ming forces invading southwards, and Nguyen Chai um, uh, pushing his way down and eventually pushing back up, at one point ending up on, on a mountain nearly starving to death with the soldiers, and then pushing up towards Hanoi, and then eventually almost pushing them out, and then two more in, uh, 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 invading forces came down in the north. Um, eventually, they they'll, they'll were all uh, pushed out. So that's the uh, context. So um, when Wen Chai managed to push out the 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 the, the Chinese the, 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 the Ming forces, um, he wrote what's referred to as the Proclamation of Victory. The Bin No uh, uh, Dai Kao um, is the great, the, basically the Great Edict. Um, uh, or a kind of pro pro proclamation, and this is perhaps, I think, one of the most uh, one of the one of the most important political uh, proclamations that has been written, but one of the, the least well understood because the Vietnamese themselves often can't read it because it's in Chinese. Um, so, uh, and, and the, the title creates a huge amount of uh, problems as well because, uh, well, it refers to the ngo, which are the Wu, which are Chinese, but at the same time, it is not. Uh, Liam Kelly raises the point that it's not clear that he was referring to the Ming invaders or perhaps some local populations as well. So we don't really know who the the Ngo are in in a in a simple sense. So we, so it, it's the case that while he was fighting against the Ming, he was also fighting against other local clans, uh, tribes, peoples. So it was as much as a civil war. 
um, as anything else. And many of the Vietnamese were also um, in support of the Ming as well. So um, it's not clear. Okay, five minutes, so the basic points I have to make. Okay, one. The basic point of this, this, this particular text is that it's got a high humanistic content and that at one level it's quite, um, this proclamation talks about how, uh, uh, how brutal the, the war was. But at another level, um, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it has a universal strain, which I think is very unusual and also gets to the heart of Confucianism in a certain way. So let me just read a couple of, tra a couple of sentences of it. Uh, after, after one of the bloody sort of battles, uh, the sky was gloomy overcast, so saddened the moon and sun turned dim. The column that came by way of Yunnan was stunned when blocked. Uh, so that so saddened the moon and sun turned dim. I mean, he's talking here about uh, the battlefield littered with bodies, and these are mostly bodies of the Chinese Ming soldiers. So the sun and moon turned dim, not for the necessary for the, for the bodies of the Vietnamese soldiers, but for all the soldiers. So there's a, a humanistic content there as well that I think is um, quite quite interesting. Um, so so is that humanism? Uh, on the other side, uh, echoing the, the paper echoes this this poem, uh, written a, a few centuries earlier, um, as a result of another uh, Chinese incursion into Vietnam. The southern emperor rules the southern land. Our destiny is written heaven's book. Notice the Confucian language. How dare you bandits trespass on our soil? You shall meet your undoing at our hands. So not only as the Chinese invaders are referred to as bandits. The actual term is even worse than bandits. I think bandits is a generous translation. So there's that kind of aggressive tone in Yuan Chai's work, but there's also then the universalism that transcends that, that overcomes that. So that there's Nguyen Chai in the, in, the, in, the, in the green with Le Loi, the, 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 who will become the king and found the dynasty. Um, reading the proclamation, mountains and rivers behind it. There were sort of sy symbols as well there. Um, Back then Square, 1945. You can you can see, you can see the the the, the charisma that he's drawing upon there, long historical tradition. Okay, so um, yeah. And anyway, after 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 this this event, writing this amazing um, proclamation, defeating a major army. Um, Basically, the, 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 the king um, um, purges him, and it's kind of like the Zhukov syndrome. Um, you, you're too successful, go away. Um, so he ends up back in, uh, in the lake, uh, around the lake, and, um, uh, and, and his career was up and down since then. He kind of came back and went backwards and forwards. And, yeah, ended up having a younger concubine, and then one of the kings came to visit him, and the king died when he was in their presence, and then he got accused of killing the king. So it was just all very messy and, and unfortunate for him throughout the rest of his life. But it, I mean, so it's, it, to cut a long story short, it was, um, yeah, in, interesting life. Um, selected poems. Well, I've got this picture of, of Hanoi, um, uh, the, the, uh, the main lake. Well, there's a lot of significance. I don't have time to go into it. It relates to this particular period. But also I think metaphorically, just by looking at it, you can kind of see the, the, the little temple in the lake um, kind of uh, sort of sign signifying almost almost the, the individual there too. So as a, as opposed to Australia's national symbols like the big um, you know harbour bridge and this sort of thing. So so this is one of Nguyen Chai's poems um, referring to uh, an earlier an, an, er an, an earlier uh, incident um, early inv uh, Chinese invasion. Um, the, the thing I'd like to draw your attention to here, I'm not going to read it all out, is um, the, the reference to the realm, the realm's defense heaven built for us. Um, uh, 
and here an inscription on a sword. This refers to the particular, uh, before, before they defeated the Ming, uh, when they were trapped on uh, Mount Lam. So the godly dragon, referring to King Lei Loi, crouched upon Mount Lam. Our fate we knew, we held it in our hands. To bear great burdens, heaven called a saint. To ride a windstorm tiger's sprouted wings. Our country's purged a thousand years of shame. This is a thousand years of, of, of earlier Chinese dynastic occupation. Inside golden caskets, deathless deeds shall live. The cosmic order has now been set a lot, uh, right. To heroes does the world still give a thought. Um, so the, the golden caskets, that's referred to, to an earlier Chinese emperor as well. So, so you kind of, I mean, e even though it's, there's a nationalistic strain, the vernacular is kind of wi within a kind of a, a civilization, a worldview that is very much Chinese in many ways. Okay, um, yeah, so watching naive exercises. I mean, that's a, a, another poem kind of a, 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 about this, uh, referring to er, earlier Chinese incursions that were defeated. Um, but interesting to note here the final, uh, the final two sentence, sentences. The sovereign wants to give his people rest. The rule of scholars will uphold the peace. Um, uh, just wanting to note that the rule of scholars there, I think that's uh, uh, kind of uh, telling and, op and optimistic. Okay. Um, this is a, a, a poem from an, an, another famous, uh, uh, well, a later, okay, I'll skip that, I don't need to go into that. But anyway, what, what can we know, what notice about that? Our karma, we must carry our lot. Um, let, let's stop the crying, heavens, winds, and quirks. So all, the, all, this, all this Confucian language that you're familiar with. Um, f uh, final slide, Nguyen Van Hong. Um, that's my wife's great-great-grandfather. Uh, he was one of the founders of the Khao Dai religion. Um, in, in, it's a religion in southern Vietnam that I, I think, uh, and other scholars have suggested, um, uh, refers more closely back to a, a, an older Vietnamese tradition, a Vietnamese Confucian tradition. Uh, and on each, so during the day he worked as a judge, as a magistrate um, for the French. So you see he's got the, 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 the French medals on him and he's, uh, you know, what, what, one of their figures of government. In private, however, he, worked, he, he, was, he was a founder of the Kaldai Church, and this was a, a, a church in the south that um, was working against the French, and apparently, according to a relative there, uh, um, ha had an arsenal in its basement um, to be used against the French. Um, but notice the poem uh, on, 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 on the far side there. Duk tang tai vi quan tu. Basically, virtue wins talent. Uh, virtue over talent creates a perfect man. The poem on the close side here. Tai tang duk vi tiu nam. Talent over virtue creates a small man. Um, why it looks like Vietnamese, it's not Vietnamese, it's actually really Chinese. So I don't know if you can, <laughs> because the, the script you're not familiar with, these are all classical Confucian uh, uh, concepts. Um, so the, uh, uh, like small man Xiao Run, I mean I could, write, I could write it up here but I don't think we have enough uh, time. Uh, and, and, and the perfect man, Yunji, so it, these are all kind of, um, uh, so one is inverted. On one side there's an the idea that, that, that virtue or moral cultivation if, is more important or has a priority over, over talent. And if you have that, that's kind of a secret to winning, not a secret, but the way to win heaven's favor almost. Um, if you rely on talent first um, and lack the virtue, no matter how much talent you have, um, you're always, and no matter how much wealth you, you, you create by virtue of that talent, without the virtue part, um, you remain a, a, a small man in a certain sense. So that's, um, I mean, so modern Vietnamese script, uh, but you know, they're still doing calligraphy, um, but the message is very old, and it goes all the way back to Tang, and perhaps back to back to Han. Uh, so that, I think that's kind of the, the, 
interesting for my intern. And that's that's basically it. Okay, thank you for for that. Thank you so much, Alex, yeah, for that. Uh, we have about 10 minutes or so for...